Welcome back to Worldview. Now, as we record this segment, the body of Baroness Thatcher is en route to St. Paul's Cathedral for her funeral aboard a 100-year-old horse-drawn gun carriage. Much has been said about her time as Prime Minister, so we wanted to focus on her impact on the view of the UK's visitors that they first get to see here via our airports and airlines. Now, we wanted to talk a little bit about two gentlemen in particular, as well as some of the other stories of airline history. I want to talk about the, the, uh, uh, Sir John King, later Lord King, and Sir Roy Watts, regarding the creation of what we now know as British Airways from British Overseas Airways Corporation, or BOAC, and BEA, British European Airways. She had a rather definitive stamp on this particular marriage. Malcolm Ginsberg is one of the longest established UK journalists, air and business travel journalists. He's editor of British Travel News. It's a weekly newsletter that arrives every Monday morning, and you can find it at www.btnews.co.uk. Malcolm Ginsberg, welcome back to Worldview. Fine, not nice to be here. It's business travel news, but don't worry about oh, that. Oh, I, I do apologize. I do apologize. So thank you for setting me straight there. Malcolm, with the passing of Lady Thatcher, and of course I being the son of a 35-year-old British Airways executive, it brought a lot of tensions back regarding that whole privatization of BA. How important a figure was she to aviation and this merger in particular? As far as the creation of today's British Airways, she was absolutely vital. Uh, but she wasn't the starter of it all. It happened actually in 1974, when uh, BOAC and BA, uh, as you've noted, uh, combined. She was then on the privatization track from 1979 onwards. Uh, and B, the uh, British Airways was an obvious uh, contender for this. Now, it had been put together by Roy Watts, later Sir Roy Watts, um, who was the leader of BEA. Uh, and he'd been pretty successful in, in, in what was happening, but she didn't think he was the right man uh, to actually go through the privatization process. So she brought in John King, very successful uh, businessman, to do that. King, King and Watts got on very well together, uh, uh, and it was a very simple ha handover uh, in 1981. But it took King uh, and his uh, deputy, Colin Marshall, later Lord Marshall, uh, quite some years to, to sort it out. It wasn't until 1987 that, that British Airways was successfully privatized and became one of the world's most profitable airlines. Well, it, it, it indeed did, and you know, it, its a stamp is known everywhere, and you can, you can certainly see its impact on the industry as a whole. Um, what other aspects of the, of the privatization scheme, because obviously she was very keen, uh, Baroness Thatcher was as Prime Minister, to privatize as much of, of government holdings as possible. What other aspects uh, of, of privatization can we talk about here regarding airlines in general and uh, the British economy in, in, in particular? Well, the other privatization was, of course, BAA, British Airports Authority. And in some respects, that wasn't so successful because what happened was that the, the B, BAA that uh, PLC that emerged actually had too much control over the, the airports. And we're still stuck to a, some extent to this day. It's, it's all broken up now so that uh, the new company Heathrow Airport Limited uh, owns Heathrow, it, it owns um, uh, Glasgow, it, it owns uh, Aberdeen and Southampton, and it's got, got rid of, uh, sold off Gatwick uh, and Stansted. But one of the disadvantages is that it's now owned by an overseas uh, corporation, who I don't think Mrs. Thatcher would have approved of. Uh, one could also argue the same about British Airways with its interests in Spain, which is costing what is still a very profitable airline, and the airline that has a very good future, uh, it's costing it dear with, with the uh, uh, with what's going on down there. So that was one of the uh, uh, the other interests uh, of Mrs. Thatcher. But you've got to go forward to 1997, and by which time she's retired, and she's going to the uh, to the Conservative Party conference, and she sees Robert Ayling and uh, 
his new British Airways with the ethnic towels on them. <laughs> yeah, those were quite interesting. T t tell us a little bit about those, the, the different tail schemes. By the way, we're talking with, uh, with uh, Malcolm Ginsburg. He's the editor of Business Travel News. I want to make sure I get that uh, straight this time. Business Travel News at businesstravel.co.uk on Worldview with Dennis Campbell. Tell us a little bit about this uh, ethnic uh, tail scheme. She gets her uh, handkerchief out. And she puts it on the towel and says, we are British, not these things. Uh, and the towel fins went. And Mr. Ailing, in fact, went uh, soon after as well. So there is, a, uh, uh, there is an answer to it all. And we're back with the lovely, uh, they call it the Chatham design, I believe, the, the, the iconic British uh, flag, which we now see uh, all over the world on the aircraft. And they look, in my opinion, terrific. Much, much better indeed, yes. I've seen many different tail schemes over the years. Uh, my father was the station manager of Boston for a very, very long time, and it was, uh, you know, it was very uh, much uh, a part of my growing up as a young lad to go out to the airport when Concord and other aircraft would come through. Um, let's talk a little bit about and change gears a bit. Uh, uh, made headlines yesterday again here as the sale was finalized for the sale of Cardiff Airport uh, from TBI Albertus now to the government here in Wales, which would be something that I would imagine uh, cause uh, the Baroness to spin a little bit uh, in her grave, that a government is now taking over an airport as opposed to the other way around. T tell us a little bit about your thoughts on this transaction. Well, it's a very interesting one. It's a question of balancing regional support uh, and the airport. The problem with uh, Cardiff Airport, it's a very small airport. It's gone down to two million and a bit, to a million and a bit. Something has to be done about it. The problem of, of a nationalised uh, airport is it's just not uh, so efficient uh, as, as a uh, proper commercial one. The guy in charge now, John Horn, is in fact... Uh, from the commercial area, he's been in charge before. It's a very tricky one because you've you've got other regional airports which the regions do need, no question of that, and they do need supporting. And whether you support it by nationalising it or not it is questionable. I personally not that keen, and I just believe these things should have a, a subsidy. But there's a difficult uh, balance. The problem with uh, with Cardiff Airport is that the trains have got very good now to London, so you don't have a you don't have a London service. You've never really had a viable London service, uh, and the the conurbation of, of Cardiff is is rather restricted in, in the passengers that it can attract. It's competing with Birmingham. Good, good, good links, road links in, uh, and Bristol Airport. Bristol Airport's not quite in the right place, yeah. but it does it does well. But again, Bristol Airport struggles. It doesn't have any long haul traffic, and what these airports need a long haul traffic, and the long haul traffic comes into a one point. It's always been the case. It will not change. It comes into London. Well, Malcolm, thank you again. Uh, as usual, uh, we, we leave here uh, a little bit more informed about the, the ways and means of, of air transport in and around this country. We've been speaking with uh, Malcolm Ginsburg. He's the editor of Business Travel News. You can find that at www.btnews.co.uk. I'm having terrible difficulties this morning keeping everything straight. That's btnews.co.uk. Uh, coming up next uh, on the program, we're going to be taking a look at a number of issues relating to uh, gay marriage, and uh, you're watching Worldview with Dennis Campbell. Stay right here.